Rwanda's economy was badly affected by the massive genocide of 1994. Industrial plants and other businesses were affected by the loss of both material and human resources. The first three years after the genocide saw 75% of factories affected return to production by 1997. Continued efforts have greatly improved the country's economy and its stability. Currently, the investment climate is very positive and Rwanda ranks at the top in the region with a major increase in private investment. Rwanda's economic sector is currently driven by mining, construction, energy, agriculture, agro-processing, hospitality, and tourism. These sectors contribute over 90% of Rwanda's annual income. Rwanda is constantly looking for partners with experience to accelerate the growth in these sectors. So far, Germany has provided more than 700 million euro. And one of the key pillars of our cooperation has been the area of technical and vocational education and training. Germany has a comparative advantage in this area due to the fact that we have a dual system in Germany of in-company training, which has proven to be the backbone of a strong German economy. Agriculture has always been the staple of Rwanda's economy. With the push towards adding value, agro-processing is increasing the number of people making a living from farm produce. This has seen a significant expansion of the private sector as employers in Rwanda. Uh, the mission of PSF, one is effective advocacy for the private business and create a vibrant business community. In terms of taxes, reducing the taxes, in terms of removing any trade barriers, NTPs, in terms of advocating for markets, open up the markets, privatize some of the public sectors to the private uh, sector. As the private sector grows, the need for space to live and work is driving the construction sector quickly, with a constant need for professional and accessible labor as more investors choose Rwanda. New technology is continuously being employed to encourage efficiency and sustainability. This rapidly developing market has attracted investors who have picked Rwanda as their base of operations in Africa. It's a very good investment climate here. Uh, we get a lot of support from the government. There's clearly a, a large demand and not many local solutions that can also be upscaled. So when we talk about mass production and quality, you know, the same quality that we can provide here, that is, I think, the main issue. With new technologies being introduced in TVET, Training has to happen quickly and, many times, on the job. We had international trainers coming from Germany to transfer the know-how to local trainers uh, and set up a, a straw tech training center at the Nyanza Tibet School. Fourteen students uh, finished uh, and graduated and we've hired the first six of them. So they are now working here in our factory. <laughs> All these sectors together engage a majority of the population, but a large number need to be transitioned from basic agriculture to the other sectors. The hospitality industry, for example, still needs chefs, cooks, waiters, service personnel and technicians to take advantage of the growing tourism and conferencing activities in the country. Rwanda is striving to become a middle-income country through a knowledge-based, private sector-driven economy that stimulates job creation. Technical, vocational and education training plays an important role in this strategy. Rwanda has made great strides in enlarging the base of TVET. So many schools have been established in the last years and what we see is that the number of students, as far as I know, has tripled within the last years. So that is enormous. But this is still not enough. So we assist Rwanda in maintaining schools, in enlarging schools and in equipping these schools. Currently, there are over 350 TVET schools in Rwanda, with the latest numbers showing enrollment of over 80,000 in 2013, up from approximately 50,000 in 2010. Most of these students are in technical secondary schools. A higher number of female students are also being recorded, and over 70,000 students have graduated from TVET since 2011. A tracer survey is being carried out to see how many have gone on to become self-employed. TVET providers increase annually, with private providers covering more than 50% of the training centers. 
In the beginning, when we started, we get excellent advice from WDA how to start the school. But the challenge was how to put it in practice, how to link the training as close as possible to the market needs, to the needs around. And what we try to do is to always look into the field what is needed outside of the school at the moment, but also what could be needed in the future. Rwanda's National Employment Program, which aims to create 200,000 off-farm jobs each year, has also started empowering many youth with employable skills. Competency-based training being promoted by the Workforce Development Authority has enabled TVET students to develop projects that answer some of the problems affecting local communities. What I have learned here, I'm able to put it into practice, even here, even outside. After I finish my studies, I may start with employer. After getting the capital, I may run my own small business. Creating a market-driven economy that is led by the private sector is also among the new initiatives being promoted by the Ministry of Education through industrial-based training, or IBT. As the Rwandan economy continues to grow, key to moving forward is raising the quality and relevance of workforce development. Engaging with the private sector to increase in-company, demand-driven training yields both thriving businesses and skills that are so crucial to this growth. In turn, the Rwanda Development Board and the Private Sector Federation combine to provide potent support and incentives for new companies. We invite you to join us in exploring the possibilities.